Um, how are you? I cleverly asked for some questions just to, so we've got so much to talk about. Hello, got my IPAs back. Yeah, yeah, oh. Mm. It's not a love lager, you know that. Um, uh, we've discussed this, though, that there isn't really a drink that I wouldn't drink if it was the only drink that I could find. But uh, I have uh, I have grown fond of uh, some things that are an acquired taste I didn't like at first, like some darker beers and sort of you know those nice micro brewery sort of beers. Uh, anyway, I, I like this one. Um, so yeah, some questions. Uh, Josephine Margaret asks, how do you stay connected with ordinary people in your writing when you live amongst celebrities? Well, mm, that's a good question, but I should say, one, I, I, I don't live amongst celebrities. I mean, I, I know some, but I don't live among, I make sure I don't. Um, how do I stay connected? Well, I can even say I don't stay connected, but I, 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 I try to, and I, I take that as a compliment, that I do stay connected with ordinary people. Um, I mean, also, you say, so I do know some celebrities, but they're not, not all celebrities are out of touch wankers. Some are nice people. Some have always been nice. Some probably went through it and come out the other side. They might have been arseholes and now, you know. So it depends. But I, 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 I really don't think of my... I do not hang around with celebrities once or twice a year. Um, uh, I, I was famous late, which helps. So I knew who I was. I had all my, you know, priorities and, and values together. I mean, I, I imagine being famous at 18, how can you not be an arsehole? Um, so there's that. In fact, I feared being famous. I hated the term, I mean, it's still an awful term, celebrity, but I feared it because I didn't want to be lumped in with those people that do anything to be famous, so I was quite militant about it, that, you know, I was famous for something. Fame was an upshot of what I did, writing and directing. Not not going to premieres of films that I wasn't in, you know? Not doing every celebrity fucking game show on telly. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, I think that worked well. I didn't want anyone to think I signed that deal with the devil. Make me famous, and you can go through my bins. So, you know, I've always, I've always done this as a job to get a good lifestyle, which had nothing to do with that. But it is, a very, it is a very good question, uh, you know, because you have got to stay connected with with ordinary things, ordinary people, everyday life. Otherwise, it's horrible. It's you know, I mean, I've I've done things about fame but they're usually spoofing it and damning it. It's about the, you know, I have studied, The Office was sort of a study in fame, an ordinary person, you know, from those quaint docu-soaps, but it was really about real people. You know, my experience of working in an office for 10 years, that came first. And it was the vehicle for it, really, the fake documentary. And once people knew that David Brent was an ordinary guy who wanted to be famous because he thought it would make him happy, it, it, it comes to life. But um, you've got to try and keep low status. So like in my new stand-up, I, I just don't talk about celebrity stuff much. I have to go back. I go back to childhood and school and family so people without the thing is about comedy is particularly in stand up you've got to try and keep your low status we're we're court jesters we're meant to be down in the mud with the other peasants teasing the king not too much so you don't get executed so that's the idea but of course you also i also want to tell the truth 
So I can't go up there and pretend I had a bad day signing on, on the tube, or never go, fuck off. You've fucking got a limo here, you lying bastard. So I can't do that. So what I do is I invite them in behind the curtain. I go, right, I'll do it in two ways. One, I go, what do you think? It's all fun and games being, look at the shit things that still happen, you know. Um, and two, uh, I do it by talking about things where the audience is better off than me. They're not as fat and old and bald <laughs> and angry as me, you know. I'm going to die before them. So that's why I embrace those sort of things. Because you've got to try and... You can't be above it. You can't go out there. There's nothing more boring than telling someone what a great fucking day you've had. Oh, shut the fuck up. Those people that go, oh, this holiday was so much better than yours. <laughs> keep, keep it to yourself. Um, <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Uh, Eric says, um, I've backed out of his surname, I'm afraid. There's way too many letters. <laughs> um, you, you know he is when I ask the question. Eric says, will the theatre be open in Toronto in August to come and see you? I don't think so. I think there's too many, there's too many risk factors. Um, and so uh, the only one that I think I'm hoping will happen is the London run, but you don't, you, you, I just, I don't know. But they won't be cancelled, I'll postpone them, whatever, you know, I will do them, even if I have to do Afterlife 3 first and then come back to it. Yeah, what can you do? 